in this video, what we have is this following open loop transfer function. So you'll notice it's got no zeros and it's got three poles. So in terms of the poles, the poles are located, just take the roots of these, the poles are located, we've got three poles, one, two, three, they're located at minus one, minus three, and minus five. So I'm just do minus one there, minus three, and minus five. Okay, just remember that the S plane is symmetric about the real axis. So in terms of the determining where we lie on the root locus along the real axis, again, if we take our pointer along here, when the number of poles and zeros, in this case we've only got poles, is odd to the right at any point, so the number of poles is odd at any point, we're on the root locus. So if I'm here, for example, there's no poles to my right, hence I'm not on the root locus. Here, number of poles to my right, it's one, hence I must be on the root locus between these two poles. Then if we go here, number of poles to my right, it's two, even number, hence I'm not on the root locus. If I go here, the number of poles to my right is one, two, three, hence an odd number, so I am on the root locus here. Okay, so you know that that's the root locus along the real axis. So let's work out the relative degree. So the relative degree is the number of poles, take away the number of zeros, so in this case, three take away zero, because there's obviously no zeros, is three, hence three poles are going to end up at infinity. So these two poles, you know when you've got kind of two poles and the root locus in between, these two are going to come, well effectively, come together, approximately midpoint, they're going to break away, and they're going to do something along the, the real axis. This pole here is because because effectively we've got three, all three of these are going to go to end up at infinity. So this one here is going to just shoot off down this direction, down the um, down the uh, the the real axis. It's as you increase the portion of the control gain, that one's just going to shoot off down the real axis. So that's red degree. Now let's move on to do the rules that take into account the asymptote. So we're looking at the asymptote. So for the, the breakaway point along the real axis, and what we're considering here is these two poles, because you know this one's just going to shoot off to, down to minus infinity. These two poles are going to come together, and they're going to break away in, in some form. So the formula is the sum of the poles, take away the sum zeros over the relative degree. So it's the sum of poles, so in our case it's minus 5. Well, I don't know if you can put that. It's just... Um, minus 5 plus minus 3 plus minus 1 take away 0 over so we're to, um, over red degree which is 3 so if you work that out what you'll get is minus 3 okay so our point is there we're doing blue actually just so it's there Right, then working out the, the the breakaway angle is just this, so it's 360 over a degree, so it's 360 over 3, so it's 120 degrees. Right, so I know the angle about uh, the real axis from that breakaway point here is going to be 120 degrees. So what I can do is just draw on these lines. These are your asymptotes. So what's going to happen, the same as in the case when you had two poles and no zero and a relative of three, what's going to happen in this particular case is as you increase the proportional control gain, this one's going to travel this way, this one's going to travel this way, approximately midpoint. So if you think of this one, it's going to break away and it's going to attract it, think of it being attracted to this asymptote, Oh, that's really, really bad. <laughs> and then it's going to travel along in this direction and fit to infinity. Um, and then this one here, as you increase the force control gain, again, this one's going to break away. And it's just going to be, because it's symmetrical, remember about the real axis, this one then is going to be attracted to this asymptote. And it's going to run along here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That one's going to go off to infinity. Um, that's pretty much your root locus there. There's one thing, because as, as with the, the previous video, these this here is k equals zero. 
just as in this poll and just as this poll. And in this particular question, because it's got a red to rear three, what can potentially happen is the, the poles as you increase the proportional control gain can move over to this point here, where your pole here in this particular case, and remember it's symmetrical, and this particular case here would lie on the root locus, or would lie sorry, along the, the imaginary axis. And when this point here, that's when your damping ratio is equal to zero, and hence your system response will just oscillate, um, it just, you know, continue to oscillate, it's got no damping. A value greater than this particular KP value here will result in a system response that is unstable and just, you know, continues to grow. So in terms of that, what you can do, you should be using the Ralph Herbert stability criterion. So you have a question whereby you have a system of relatively free, you also need to use the Ralph Herbert stability criterion. So for that, you need to get your closed loop, um, closed loop uh, transfer function. And I spoke about that briefly in, in the previous root locus video. You need to populate that, keeping KP variable, and then go through the steps of using the, of using the uh, Ralph Herbert. And for this particular question, although I'm not going to go through it in the video, you should determine a range like this. So KP is greater than zero. Okay, it can't be less than zero because KP open loop poles, and then it must be less than 12.8. So a value for your KP of 12.8 will literally put you your poles on the imaginary axis. A value greater than 12.8 will result in a system that has the poles move to the right half of the S plane, and hence they become unstable. So if you recall. Um, right half of the S plane is unstable, left half uh, plane is stable, and hence that's why we mainly focus on the left half because this is where we, this is for stability. This is where is where we want our poles to be located. So hopefully that answers your questions in terms of a system that has three poles and no zeros, and hence a relative degree of three.